Life bars are really simple to make. You can have one up in no time at all, so let me show you. What's up everybody, welcome to MyPixel. As always, it's awesome to have you here. If you're making a game, there's a good chance that you need a life bar. Luckily, it's really easy. To start off with, we have a basic platformer that you've probably seen in other videos. Nothing fancy here, just your main character and some enemies. The node that we're going to use to make the life bar is called Texture Progress. I'm just going to put that inside one of my canvas layer nodes that I've repurposed from another episode. I just went ahead and renamed the Texture Progress node to Life Bar. If you don't already know about the canvas layer and some of the container nodes that you see here, you can check out one of my other videos titled Godot 3 Monitor Your Game's FPS where I implemented those nodes. The short of it is that those nodes will allow me to place a life bar on the screen and maintain its position in our view, that is, the life bar will follow us as we move through our stage. Now we can look at the properties of our texture progress node in the inspector. Under the texture section, you'll see three items named under, over, and progress. This is where we'll put our life bar images. The image that goes in the under section will be shown under the other life bar images, the progress image will be above that, and the over image will be on top. First we'll drag in our under image which is just a white box for this example. Now we can see that on the screen. I want to be able to see some of the background through that so I'll use the tint section to adjust the alpha or transparency value of the under image. Next we can drag in our progress image which will sit on top of the under image. You might notice that we can't see any of our progress image yet, but we'll get to that soon. Last is our over image. If we look down in the range section, we can see the default values for the texture progress node. We'll go ahead and leave the defaults, but we can try playing with the value number to see how our life bar reacts. Right now it's at zero, so we don't see any portion of the progress image. If we change that to something like 50 though, now we can see half of the image. We see half of the image because 50 is half of the max value, which is currently set to 100. If we set the max value to 300, we see much less of the bar, because 50 is a smaller percentage of 300 than it is for 100. But in any case, I like working with 100 better, so I'll just change it back. I've already given my character a variable for HP and set that to 100 as you can see here. I've also done something to save time and just set the HP value to decrease when we press a certain key. That way we can quickly see if our life bar is working correctly. So we have a life bar and our character has HP. The last thing we have to do is set the value of the life bar to match the character's HP. There are many ways you can do this, but let's just attach a script to the life bar. Then we can go ahead and do something like this. We use the physics process to do a check on every frame. Again, there are other ways to do this, but this one is pretty straightforward and simple to understand. We use the word value to access the value property of the life bar, and we set that equal to the HP of the character. That bunch of code that you see there is just navigating our scene hierarchy to get to my stage 1 object, which contains my hero 1 object. Once I have access to my hero 1 object, which is my character, I access its HP variable. And that should be all we need to see our life bar in action. We see that our life bar starts out full and decrements by a value of 10 every time I press a key, which in this case is the end key. I also have a goofy little effect that I threw together to illustrate the working life bar, so let's take a look at that. Now the character's HP and life bar also react to touching an enemy. Sure, this effect is uh, pretty goofy and totally needs more work, but it's purely just there to show you that the life bar works correctly. If you liked today's video, don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss out on what's coming up next. The sprites, source code, and everything else that I've used to make this tutorial today is available for download on my Patreon page, so if you want to check that out and also support the channel, the link is in the description. Thanks to everyone for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.